Hi folks, how are we all doing? I'm the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrium and in Ermston in the northwest of England. I do hope you're finding the love and you're witnessing the blessings that are there in life in these very difficult times. It's hard, my friends, but we're all in this together. So I'm offering these devotions as my little bit of hope, doing what I can, playing my role, being part of the solution. They are offered as a balm for the heart, the mind, the spirit and the soul. And the title for today's reflection is Family. It takes three cups of tea. Interesting. So I invite us to still ourselves. Let's invite a loving presence to be here amongst us and to awaken from deep, deep within us. I have lit the flame of freedom in the cup of belonging, acceptance and love. We join together in our physical separation, but united in our devotion to life and to love. Help us to sing for joy, like the birds each morning sing their faith in being alive and being here. May we know the deep connections that sustain us, the roots that hold us so close and nurture us beneath the surface of our lives. May we be unafraid to explore the depths of being, the many layers of life. May we be awake to all that is life, including the unseen, the unknown. May our vision be uninhibited by what we think we know. May we, may we be open to new vision, vision way beyond our imaginings. May we remember that we are deeply connected in heart, mind, spirit and soul. May we be open to all this day brings, to all that life offers, may we, and may we offer our all to life. May our very f fragile, finite human beings become vessels for love this day and in all the days to come. Amen. <clears throat> Most of us started out in a family of some sort, some kind. Now, whether we remember our childhoods fondly or with dread, I bet we all have some complicated feelings about our families of birth and our families of upbringing. Families are complicated things. They always have been, by the way. My mum is a family history expert and she's purely self-taught in this. Over the years, she has spent a great deal of her spare time exploring people's family histories. One thing that she has noticed is that they have always been complicated things. Families are full of mystery and secrets. People are the same as they've always been, you know. We don't change that much. Families are complicated things. Therefore, it should come as no surprise that so many of us have complicated feelings about our families. Most of us are born into a family of some sort. And within these families, we learn the basics of living. And at some point, we break away and establish our own emerging adult personalities. For all of us, the day eventually comes when we leave the nest. Some are pushed, I know, but we all leave in the end. In the end, we begin to make our own complicated families, merging with others and blending in all kinds of fascinating ways. Families are fascinated and complicated things, the place of some of our greatest joys and our most desperate sufferings. doesn't seem to matter how they're made up. They're places of our greatest joys and our most desperate sufferings. And there are many ways to create and make a family. Many. And once again, that's always been the case, if you know anything of family history. Families are not some idealised image of a 1980s sitcom, thank God they're not. And if you take a proper look at your family history, you will see the evidence of this. Now more than anything, a family is made up of stories. Families tell stories just as cultures and religions tell stories. They are held together by the telling of these stories. Some of the stories are ones of deep suffering and others of incredible joy. Some are funny stories. They're often funny stories. I know mine are. And family stories are not static things. They are constantly being rewritten and retold. 
little while ago I recounted an amusing story from of my family playing family fortunes at Christmas with a happy mixed blend of my ever forming and reforming family. Please never ask me to explain who belongs to who because you will be sat here all day as I try and explain who and how people are belong, belong to one another. Who exactly is who? It's an impossible task. You can't do it. A family is a place of stories. Another word for stories in this sense is gossip, actually. We connect by telling our stories of each other, keeping up to date with various members and connecting to various people. The stories are not just of the past, but also the present too. Family members gossip about each other. Now, such gossiping can be very hurtful and diminishing. I'm sure all of us have had bad experience of this kind of gossip. That said, healthy gossip is shared too. And this kind of healthy gossip is closer to what gossip meant in its original meaning. The word gossip is derived from words for God and sibling. It originally meant gossip akin to God. The word gossip originally described a person you were connected to in a deep spiritual kinship, either a sponsor or perhaps a God parent. That was your gossip. So when we share such stories, we are connecting people together in a shared concern. But sadly, gossip these days means almost the exact opposite of what it originally meant. Gossip today is more akin to separation and connection. I'm fascinated by how words change in meaning. Words can actually almost mean the opposite of what they originally meant. Isn't it weird what we do to our own language? Now, this might surprise, well, probably won't surprise you to hear, actually, but the, the word family has also changed in meaning over time, too. Family never meant the classic image of mother, father and 2.4 children. The word itself originally meant all members of a household, a property or an estate. This would include servants as well as relatives. The Latin word familiar did not refer to parents and children exclusively in, the, in ancient times, the word domus from which domestic was thus derived actually meant your related family. So family came later in, in its current meaning. And rather like the word itself, family has changed over time. What we consider as our family may well be different for all of us. I think that a healthy family is something that is constantly opening and changing shape. It ought to be a place of welcome and not one of exclusion. To live healthily by family is to make the other the unfamiliar. It is instead to invite them to become familiar. But it takes time to get to know the unfamiliar. But not too much time. Actually, all we have to do is to begin to relate to each other, to gossip in the old-fashioned way, to tell our stories of connection. And how do we do that? Or simply by sharing time, usually over a meal or simply a tea or a cup of tea or coffee. In so doing, begin to relate to one another in real ways. And it doesn't take long. As Titch Nat Han has said, we are most real when we are drinking tea. In fact, some suggest that all it takes is three cups of tea to really relate to a person. And this idea is beautifully illustrated by the following passage from Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen. This following passage describes the author being taught its meaning by a Balti tribesman in Pakistan, a man he was working with at the time. The first time you share tea with a Balti, you are a stranger. The second time you take tea, you are an honoured guest. The third time you share a cup of tea, you become family. And for our family, we are prepared to do anything even die. Dr. Greg, you must take time to share three cups of tea. We may be uneducated, but we are not stupid. We have lived and survived here for a long time. Real wisdom there, I think. So perhaps all it takes is three cups of tea for the unfamiliar to become familiar. But once we have shared our story, once we have gossiped for a short while, we will already have made deep connections. We will see ourselves as kin to one another. 
We will see ourselves as kin to one another. We will make deep, deep connections to others and to ourselves. We will see that we are kin. We are kindred spirits bound together by a simple tea ritual. And this, I believe, is the case for all of humanity. All it takes is the time to share our stories, for all of us truly see that we are related. We are kin. We are kindred. We are kindred spirits. We are part of the one human family that we belong to. But sadly in life, we don't often see one another as kin. We see the other as different, as not being part of the human family. The religious traditions at their worst have perpetuated this. And yet I'm not convinced that this is the essence of their teachings, just the way that some have taught and been practised. The first book of Genesis, in chapter 1, depicts humanity being created in God's image. So if one is to be a follower of the book, then surely every act done by one person to another is done by and to a person made in that very same image. That all of us are a part of the one human family and fail to see that is the ultimate wrong. You see something similar in the Quran, which in the fourth chapter declares, O oh people, be conscious of your Lord who created you from a single soul and created from her her mates and from them many men and women scattered far and wide. The Quran suggests a deep unity within the one human family and that all of us are created by God and that we're all descended from the one single soul. Buddhism extends this familiarity beyond merely humanity but to all sentient beings, seeing all individual beings as being like waves on the ocean. Although each wave has a sense of its own separateness, its lesser self, it is better understood as part of the ocean, its greater self. Suggesting that the key is to awaken to the larger truth that not only are we a part of the ocean, but we are in fact, in essence, the ocean itself. Or again, to paraphrase Jesus, as I like to do with this wonderful line. What you do to the least of them, you do to me. It's more than interconnection as well. It's deep kinship. The family of life itself. And we are all part of the one family of life. We share a common heritage but not only that, we share a common destiny too. We are deeply interconnected in deep kinship. Thus, no one is really unfamiliar. We just haven't shared our three cups of tea yet. And there are two things that every one of us share. That's joy and grief. We all know joy and we all know grief. When one of those we call family has a success in life, we all celebrate. We all share this joy. I witnessed this a while ago at my sister's wedding when all of hers and Howard's loved ones came together to share in their joy. And it's the same with grief, when we gather as we lose someone we love. These are the feelings that the whole human family has to share in. We are united in joy and we are united in grief. Feelings familiar to us all. And isn't it these, aren't these the stories we share over those three cups of tea? I'm going to end this little devotion with a piece of wisdom from the Zen Buddhist tradition. It illustrates ways in which we can connect and bear witness to our common kinship and familiarity to one another. So here we go. Soyen Shaku, the abbot, each morning took a walk accompanied by his companion from the monastery to the nearby town. One day as he passed the house, he heard a great cry from within it. Stopping to inquire, he asked the inhabitants, Why are you wailing, sir? And they said, Our child has died, and we are grieving. The abbot, without hesitation, sat down with the family and started crying and wailing himself. As they were returning to the monastery, the abbot's companion asked, Master, is this family known to you? No, the abbot answered. Why then, Master, did you also cry? To which the abbot simply answered, 
so that I may share their sorrow. And isn't this our common humanity, to share our sorrow and of course to share our joy, to become family, to make the unfamiliar familiar. Do you know what? All it takes is three cups of tea. Why not try now? Amen. I'm going to end today's reflection with some words of blessing. We need to bless more. We can all bless. We bless by giving our whole hearts to life. So let's begin blessing today. Let's give our whole hearts to life. May your imagination be fired. Be ye lamps unto yourself. Be your own confidence. Hold to the truth within yourself as to the only lamp and shine bright for the world to see. And may that light shine bright from our very being and may it do so in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, in all that we do. Amen. <laughs>